And I am going to try doing this with a clip on. And it's literally a clip on, isn't it? It's a paper clip. So no zooming in on the paper clip, right? <laughs> cool. You ready? All right, rock and roll. Good afternoon, everybody. Let's make sure you're in the right place. How many of you came here to hear about boomers, doomers, and diapers? Is that what you're here for? Because if you're here for something else, that's what we're going to talk about, OK? All right, I want to make sure you're in the right place and you can all hear me. Show of hands. How many of you in this room are getting older or know somebody who is? Anybody here? Now, some of you didn't raise your hand. I hope that's you. You're not, you're not getting older? No, not your Benjamin Button's back there. Good. You're going backwards. I like that. All right. Uh, my guess is a lot of you came here to this event because you came here and you want to learn about investing or looking for an investment of some kind. So I'm going to share with you that I'm going to be talking about assisted living and how you can get involved in that from either an investment perspective or how you can actually get involved in the business aspect of it <clears throat> or as we you saw down in our booth there, number 300 on the real estate side. So just so that I can kind of take your pulse and get a feel for where you're at, how many of you in this room are just really looking for a flat out investment of some kind? Just write a check, make an investment. Raise your hand so I can see. How many of you are looking for stable, steady income and you're willing to do something, a little effort involved, not just write a check, put in a little effort to get great income? Raise your hand so I can see a lot of you. And then how many of you are really here because you want to learn about the idea of baby boomers, silver tsunami, assisted living, and taking advantage of those opportunities? Raise your hand so I can see. Okay, good. So that really kind of caught everybody. I'm not going to focus a whole lot on the investment aspect because only a few of you raised your hand there. Let me kind of cover that right up front. If you want to invest in senior housing, three of the largest REITs, real estate investment trusts, right now are on senior housing. Five years ago, 10 years ago, the rates of return were through the roof. I mean, they were getting 15% rates of return. So they all started getting involved, throwing billions of dollars at it. And now you can see the results of that. They're building big, huge, mega 100, 200, 300 unit complexes out there in what we call CCRCs, Continuous Care Retirement Communities. Maybe you've seen them. I don't mean the villages. I mean these places where you pay $100,000 to get in and then you move into independent living, so you're on your own. If you need help, call 911. And then when you do need help, you can move into the assisted living with inside that complex. And then when you need more help, you move into the skilled nursing or the nursing home. So that kind of campus is called a CCRC. And those might cost $20 million to $50 million to develop. And the big guys, the Brookdales, the Sunrise, the HRMs, they raise billions of dollars to invest in those and develop them. So investors write a check, they put the money together, they invest, the dividends are paid out. 8, 10, 12% has been the returns in the past. Today, the dividends are more in the 5, 6, 7% range, maybe 8% on a good year. So what we're going to talk about is a little bit different. And in the booth, it's been really interesting. Come on in, we're just getting started. In the booth, as people have been coming up, and they're saying, well, what is it that you do? You know, why are you here talking about residential assisted living? And I've had to answer that question to different people in different ways. And the answer is, we're here to kind of let you know what is available to you. And you can get involved in this in lots of different ways, but I guarantee every single person in this room listening to my voice is going to get involved in assisted living one way or the other. You're either going to own the real estate, own the business, write a check to get involved, or you're going to be living in a home somewhere writing a check to somebody else. So we're all going to get involved one way or the other. And it may not be you, it may be a parent or a loved one of some kind, but when you think about this, you're going to get involved in one way or the other. And when we use the term silver tsunami, the baby boomers that are coming. Now I'm a baby boomer, I'm 56. I'm on the one end of this spectrum. On the other end of the spectrum, those who are 71 years old, the front edge of the baby boomers, they're not in assisted living. I'm not in assisted living, but we are part of that silver tsunami that's coming. So the baby boomers that are here today, their parents are in assisted living. But when the baby boomers hit, the population spike that is coming is off the chart. The opportunity is absolutely huge. So this business is good right now, but there's huge opportunity coming. So you're in the right place at the right time. And that's why there's books being written on this. Everybody from Warren Buffett on the way down to Robert Kiyosaki and everybody else is talking about this as an opportunity of our lifetime. So I used to look around the room and I'm saying, well, a lot of you look like you are in that baby boomer generation. 
some of you a little bit ahead, some of you a little bit behind, but a lot of us are right in the middle of it. How many of you are baby boomers? Raise your hand high. And the rest here just a little ahead, a little behind. How many of you have had, and I'm kind of curious before I get into this part, a personal experience with assisted living? And what I mean is a parent, a loved one. It's kind of expensive, isn't it? Does anybody know what it costs to have mom or dad or grandma or grandpa live in assisted living on a monthly basis? Raise your hand if you know. How much? Eight to ten thousand dollars a month. Yeah, I can't remember offhand, but I know it's expensive. Yeah. Five thousand a month. Anybody else? Uh, about ten years ago, six thousand. Six thousand a month ten years ago. I mean, five thousand, eight thousand, ten thousand. These are real, real numbers. And as I said, some of you are not planned for this, and some of you are saying to yourself, well, I hope it doesn't happen to me. No, I'm gonna give you the facts and the figures and you'll understand it's gonna happen. You're gonna get involved one way or the other. They'll let those people know that it's, they're welcome to come on in and just, I know. All right, so here we go. My name is Gene Garino. I am a certified financial planner in the US for over 20 years and also licensed in Australia for over five years now. Why Australia? Because I did do some work for a number of companies when I was in Australia doing some work and it was something I was required to do. Done a lot of business there. So I understand numbers and finance and so on. Today, what I focus on is just one thing, assisted living, specifically residential assisted living. The reason why residential is I don't want to compare with Brookdale, Sunrise, Atrium. They got a lot of money. And big money isn't necessarily smart money. They're just big money right? Big money is big business. They raise money and that's a business. They deploy the capital and that's a business. And then running the business is a business. So big money isn't necessarily smart money, but a lot of times in that deploying of the money and then turning it over to the people that own it, and that's investors like yourself, they kind of just run off to the next deal. So they leave you holding the bag making five, six, seven percent. So if you want to make more, you're going to have to get involved a little bit. So let's continue on. What I do is I train people to get involved and be in the business either as an operator or in the business as you own the real estate and you lease it to an operator, getting up to twice the fair market rent with a long-term tenant. How many of you have ever done real estate investing before? And as a real estate investor, think about the last home you rented to somebody. If you got twice the regular rent, twice the fair market rent, that twice the, the extra money goes where? in your pocket. And if instead of a one-year lease, it was a five-year lease, how many of you would like to have kind of a no-hassle lease? No vacancies. And if the tenant didn't destroy your home, would that be a good plus? <laughs> so if you just wanted to do the real estate part and lease the house to somebody who's operating the business, let them make the big money and you're okay with that, perfectly fine. But some of you just want to write a check and be an investor in it and there's that opportunity as well. So. That's what I do, and as a certified financial planner, I'm going to back it up. When I was 18 is when I did my first real estate. When I was 25 is when I did the first commercial real estate. And I've done a lot since then, 17 businesses in the last 39 years. But over that course of time, I've literally trained hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. So I'm kind of a teacher at heart. People ask me, you know, how come you're not just doing 1,000 homes? Because I love to teach. Yeah, it's part of what I love to do is I do these homes myself. You can talk to me in the booth and see my homes, but I also love to teach other people how to do it. And then people ask me, well, how come you're not doing a franchise, right? Do this as a model, teach other people, charge them money and take a percentage of what they do. And my response is because I only see a benefit for the franchise or, and not the franchisee. I mean, yeah, I'll take 10% of what you do. Good for me, but not so good for you, but I'm willing to teach you how to do it so you can do it yourself. Now, when I say do it yourself, I am not in the home every day. I'm here with you. My manager's in the home. My caregivers are in the home, but I'm here with you. I may not see the home for a month or two, but I'm in charge, right? I manage the managers, but I can do it over the phone, by a computer. I might spend five to 10 hours a week doing my part, but I can make a really nice living managing the managers, owning the business, but it doesn't own me. So just to kind of allay that concern. I've written books, I've hosted radio shows, I actually have two radio shows right now, 
In addition to that, uh, the radio shows itself, I've been married for 31 years to the love of my life, and I've got four amazing kids, and one of them is right here in the back of the room, Isabel. You saw her at the booth, and she's there helping out. My brother Jim is actually here on the other side of the room as well. So a lot of family involvement with the company, and that's a beautiful thing. And I have my first grandchild. So that's just a little bit about me personally, so you understand who you're listening to. Company, it's not just me. We have a whole team of people that help our students at the Residential Assisted Living Academy. So I just want to give you that perspective so you understand who you're listening to and what this is all about. So why residential assisted living? Why now and why you? Those are really the three questions. Because <clears throat> frankly, you can do anything you want in life. And I encourage people to do what you want in life. A lot of you are at a point where you're retired, you have money, and you have choices to do the things you want, where you want, and so on. So why get involved in this? Well, if you're at that point where money's really not the issue anymore, it's really about doing something that's more important to you. You know, the why is more important than the, I gotta get the money. So the money's not it, it's the, what are you doing it for? What's your purpose? And for me, it's about doing something good and making money. How many of you want to help other people and make a lot of money? I like the feel of that. When I buy a chunk of yellow rock, right, and that's the way I look at it, yellow rock, gold, right? It makes me feel good, but it didn't help anybody else. Matter of fact, I know there's a lot of people that went through a lot of pain to get that gold in my hand. It's just yellow rocks. But when somebody walks into the home and hands me a check for $5,000 and says, thank you for taking care of my mother, that's awesome. That makes me feel really good, doing good and doing well. So if you're looking for that kind of thing, I like that. Why did I get into this? Because when my mom needed help, I couldn't find what I was looking for. You know, my mom, she started to kind of get to the point where she was forgetting her medication. You know, did she eat? Sometimes she got up from the table and said, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten yet today. No, it's still there on your, you know, you understand what I'm saying not able to take care of themselves and so on, kind of losing that a little bit, not able to take care of themselves the same way. So what do you do? Well, the family gathers around and says, well, who can stop in and check in? Who can take the time off and help out? And before you know it, you're hiring people to take care of mom and dad at $20 an hour. Eight hours a day, that's $4,800 a month. That's a lot of money. So at some point, maybe you have to make the decision. Not that you want to, not that you're a bad son or a bad daughter, but maybe you have to say it's better for mom and it's better for all of us to be the kids again and move mom into a home. Now, how many of you have ever been in that point of your life where you had to make that decision? We weren't. And at that point, you feel bad. You feel a little guilty. But you also realize there's the higher good, the better decision. And at that point, you start looking. And what do you find? You find here's a 150-bed unit that doesn't really look like home. Certainly doesn't smell like home doesn't really feel like home. It's like a hotel. It's like an apartment building. And you bring it in and you say, well, it looks good to me because there's a garden. There's a movie theater. There's this, there's that. It's eye candy for the kids. But when you leave mom there at night and you come back in and visit and realize there's only three caregivers for 150 people, it doesn't feel so good. So I realized that's not what I wanted for mom. So I vowed to create a better solution. I said, mom lived in a home for 85 years. I wanted to be in a home. She wants to be in her home but if I can create a home that I'm proud to have my mom and my dad in, a lot of people would want that same situation. And I was right. So I created the first one, then the next, and the next, and people were asking me, can you help me do that same thing? And I said, yes. And here's what I found, and maybe some of you have found it too, is there's homes like that right here in Florida that some of them are not being run very well. I mean, you can open up a home, it's called an ALF, A-L-F, Assisted Living Facility here in Florida, pretty easily. High school diploma, GED is fine, 24-hour course called a core training course, fill in some paperwork, you can be your own caregiver, or you can hire somebody off Craigslist, one hour of training before a caregiver can start, and you're good to go. That's the minimum requirement in the state of Florida. Wow. It's not what I wanted for mom, it's not what I do with my students, but you can. My goal at the Residential Assisted Living Academy is to bring this whole thing to another level so we can create quality care a much better situation in nicer homes in nicer areas. They're gonna pay four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000. You said eight and $10,000, some of you. I just want them to have excellent care. Now, I'm not talking about Medicare and Medicaid. I can't do that and provide really good quality care for $2,000 a month. I just can't do that. 
But the private pay, the long-term care insurance, paying four, six, eight thousand, we can all do good and do well at the same time. So that's what we do and that's what we teach. This is the only picture of my mother, my daughter, and my granddaughter together, the three generations. It's the only picture of my mother and her great granddaughter, her only one, together. My only regret is I'm not in the picture. There is no picture of the four generations together. There it is. That was about six months before mom passed away. And I know sometimes people say, I'm sorry you lost your mom. I didn't lose her, I know exactly where she is. All right? And we can have that conversation, but that's exactly how I feel. So this is about helping people, and yes, we can make a lot of money. So if you just want to be an investor, awesome. It's an investment with a heart. You want to be a real estate investor? Great. Get twice the fair market rent with a long-term, low-impact tenant. And if you want to do this as a business, doesn't mean you have to be there every day, not working 40, 60, 80 hours a week. How about five or 10 hours a week doing something good, and you don't have to do it in your own backyard? Even though you in Florida have massive opportunity because look at the population here. You can do it anywhere. I was in Panama two weeks ago teaching people about residential assisted living. Panama, the country. You can do it in any state, you can do it in other countries. When we talk about baby boomers, when the war ended World War II, people came home and got busy all over the world. It boomed all over. The point is, this is a fact and it's all over the world. Your opportunity is huge. So just in case you're wondering, it's not this. Put some barbed wire around the roof, it's a prison. It's not that. It's not this. The show from the 80s, put four mature women in a home, they take care of each other. It's not that. It's somewhere right in between. It's a single family home. You literally could be living next door to one and you wouldn't even know it. No sign in front, not a lot of cars parked in front. The residents don't have cars. In the home itself, there's seniors living there, men and women. Now, it could be all men, could be all women, but typically men and women. Notice these homes are single level, but it could be two-story if you have an elevator or chair lift, something like that. But the home itself is just a regular home for the most part. Maybe the bathtubs were taken out and roll-in or walk-in showers are there to make it easier and safer. Grab bars were added. Maybe the carpets were taken out because they absorb liquid, so tile and hardwood or linoleum is down. So the renovations of the property is not massive, it's just a few differences. Inside the home, it's a group of seniors. Not a mom, a dad, two kids, and a dog, but eight, 10, 12 seniors. Now they don't need a lot of space, they may have a private bedroom or a semi-private bedroom, two people in a room, but the kitchen, just need one. Family room, just need one. Some extra space, indoor areas, outdoor areas to share. So our rule of thumb is 300 square feet of house living space per resident. So if you had 10 residents, 3,000 square foot home. Legally, you could do that with a 1,500 square foot home. Comfortably, 3,000 square feet. So there it is, and it's a home, right? It's not doctors, nurses, and gurneys. It's O'Doul's, all right, it's O'Doul's, relax. <laughs> But if they have a note from their doctors, they can have an actual beverage, it's okay, right? It's a home, they have parties, birthday parties, every holiday, the families come over and enjoy their time. We have an open door policy, you're welcome to come anytime, it's not like you have to set an appointment or the door is locked, you can't come in. The family wants to come and visit anytime, we want you there all the time, it's for them. So do good and do well, that's the concept. So this, what is this? It's a group residence for seniors in a residential setting where their activities of daily living are being taken care of. Now maybe you've heard that term, ADL. The, day, the moment you woke up today, everything you did is an activity of daily living. Went to the bathroom, brushed your teeth, got dressed, all of those things. Some people need a lot of help, some people need a little bit of help. But nobody's going to move into assisted living unless they need help with an activity of daily living. Some states say you can't move in unless you need help with at least one, or some say three. But they're only moving in. Now there's two key parts to this. One is real estate, the other is business. So the real estate has certain profit potential and the business has even more profit potential. So I just want you to understand it's not just a real estate play, it's a business play as well. On the, well, how many of you recognize Robert Kiyosaki, by the way? Right, so last year it was very cool. I had an opportunity to go on a cruise. Robert Kiyosaki was there, we're in Jamaica. And it was very neat because he came up to me and pulled on my sleeve and said, hey, 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 you're the assisted living guy. Gene, tell me about assisted living. 
And I had to just pause for a moment. So it was like my moment of zen. I'd like, hold it, pause for a minute. Robert Kiyosaki is asking me to consult him. It's like, pause. So it's really interesting because he's turning 70 next month. So he's turning 70 and he's thinking about assisted living. No, he could hire a doctor, a nurse, and a chef to live in his home and take care of him hand and foot. But what he understands is there's millions of people that will need this help and there's a huge opportunity. So he wanted to learn about assisted living and how he can get involved. So I was able to consult with him on that topic. <laughs> So where's the big money invested? The REITs, the big money. $15 billion of projects happening right now. Well, the reason why they're invested in senior housing is because of this. These other colors represent everything else, hotels, apartments, industrial, office, retail, over the one year, three year, five year, and 10 year period. But the dark line on the right represents senior housing. Senior housing blows away every other investment. That's why the big money loves senior housing. But Brookdale, and how many of you have heard of Brookdale, the largest publicly traded senior housing out there, period, could double in size every year. And they still could not keep up with the demand. They could double in size every year and still cannot keep up with the demand. So if you're wondering if you're too late, is there enough demand? They could double in size every year and cannot keep up with the demand. It's huge. So this chart tells the story. If you assume that an 82-year-old is the average age of a person living in assisted living, 82 years old, they're not 65, right? They're not 105. Let's say it's 82. This is that population, right? Here, 1945, this is when the war ended. People came home, noticed the population spike. Then they came home, they had their first baby, said, let's do it again, had the second baby. Then they said, let's wait a little bit. And then they went on and on and on. And before you know it, they got seven kids, right? That was where my family was, right there. Boom, 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 boom. So there it is, this spike, this silver tsunami, this is what's coming. This is where we're at today. There's waiting lists in senior communities today. You can't even get in the good ones. They can't build them fast enough. This is where we're at today with the population. This is 10, 12 years in the future. This silver tsunami that is coming is literally unstoppable, and that's the opportunity. Now, how many of you want to be at the right place at the right time? You're here. If you miss this one, you screwed up royally. <laughs> and it's not like you couldn't see it coming, couldn't figure it out. Now, there's three ways to participate. If you're taking notes, write this down. One is own the real estate and lease it. Lease it to somebody else who's going to operate the business. Because I know some of you are saying, I don't want to be in this business. I don't want to change diapers. I'm not, going to be, I'm not a doctor or a nurse. Well, I am in this business. I don't change doc, uh, diapers. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor. You don't have to be either. But if you're saying, I just don't want to be in the business, got it. If you want to own the real estate and lease it to an operator and get up to twice the fair market rent, now think, there's properties today real estate investors pass on because they can't just buy it and rent it to the average family. It's too big of a property. They can't get enough rent, so they say, it's a great deal, but I can only rent it out for $3,000 and I can't pay the mortgage. But if you could buy it and rent it out for $6,000, oh, now you can make the money. So rent it for twice the fair market rent to long-term low-impact tenant. If somebody's going to be operating a business where they're making ten dollars or $20,000 in net profit, even after they pay you twice the fair market rent, even after they pay you twice the fair market rent, they don't want a one-year lease. They're going to want a five-year lease with five-year renewals. How many of you are okay with having a tenant who's willing to pay you twice the rent for a five-year lease? Yeah, kind of a no-brainer, right? Now, don't buy the house and hope to find a tenant. What you want to do is find the operator first and say, where do you want the property? Where do you want it? Let's get, you tell me where it is that you want it and I'll go get it for you, right? Don't do it the other way around or you'll screw it all up. We'll teach you how to do that properly, but this next one, own the business and own the real estate. Now that's what I do and that's what most of our students do at the academy. They own the real estate because they get the benefits of the real estate, the tax benefits, depreciation, and so on, and they own and operate the business because that's where you make the big, big money, that fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month in profit. If you own the business and the real estate, just make sure that the business doesn't own you. Work on your business, not in your business. We've all heard that before, right? 
Here's the problem. And if anybody has ever heard of the residential assisted living concept before, you've been in one of these homes, here's the typical situation. Somebody has a home, the kids moved out, right? They grow up and move out. There's extra bedrooms. They say, you know what? I'm gonna have some older people move in these extra bedrooms that the kids used to be in. I'm gonna make some extra food, do some extra laundry, and I'm gonna charge them three, $4,000 a month. So now they're making extra food, doing some extra laundry, have four or five people move in, and now they're making good money, but they're trapped in their own home. They can't take a vacation. They're trapped in their own home. And as those people run out of money, they can't pay any more on themselves. Then they go to the state and say, I have no more income, no more assets. The state will pay. But the state's not able to pay $4,000 a month. They'll only pay $2,000 a month. But that person with a big, huge heart who now says, I can't have that person move out of my home. I'm only going to accept $2,000 a month. So where they were making a good living trapped in their own home, now they're making a fair living or bad living trapped in their own home. That's not the way I want you to do it. That's a mom and pop operation and that's not it. What you're going to do is where you're doing it as a business. There's a manager, not you. They hire caregivers, not you. It's a home that has five, no, 10, 12 residents in a nice proper home in a very nice neighborhood, and you're making good money. And when somebody has to go to the state to get the money, we move them from that home into another home, not yours, that's willing to accept $2,000 a month. So we're going to do the private pay the long-term care insurance pay. Let somebody else take the state pay. Now, if that sounds heartless, it's not at all. It's just, I can't take care of everyone. I'll take care of the ones that I can. So there it is, own the business, don't let it own you, or just be a passive investor. Now, the passive investor, what that means is write a check and you're not involved, passive. You're not picking out tiles or making decisions or worried about anything. And if you want it to be very secure, then just do it on the real estate side. Right? You're just making a loan. You're on the debt side. 70% loan to value on the real estate. But if you want to make more than that, you want to make 10 to 15%, maybe take a little bit less on the guaranteed side and make more because you're participating on the profit side of the business. So if you want to make a higher rate of return, and remember I said at the beginning, it just depends on how close you want to get. If you just want to write a check and put it in a REIT, knowing you can sell it tomorrow and get your money back, well, you're going to settle for 5 to 8%. But if you want to get a little bit more involved, well, now we can make more. If you want to get more involved, hey, you can buy the real estate and operate that business and make 30%, 30%, 30%. 30%? Yeah. And if you leverage it, leverage it, that means borrow some and use some cash. Oh, now we can get really crazy with the, with the numbers. 100% plus. Those are real numbers really significant numbers. Do good, do well. So we can talk about all those things, but there's three ways to get involved. One's very passive, write a check, done. The other one is I own the real estate, lease it to somebody else, let them do the business, I'm just the real estate person. Third is real estate and the business. Now I know at this point you probably have a lot of questions, so what I like to do is I like to leave plenty of time to be able to answer those questions for you. But I will say, notice the last line came up, if you invest or partner with somebody where you're gonna lend the money, invest, you better make sure that they know what they're doing. So if you come to our academy to learn how to do this, we have people that are private lenders, we have people that are operators, people that are real estate investors, and they come to the class because they want to learn as much as they can if they're going to get involved. You know, don't come to the class just to be an operator. We're not gonna teach you how to be a caregiver, that's not what we do. We teach you the business of, the real estate side of, the investor side of, but we're not there to teach how to be an operator. That's not what we do, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just say, again, you can own the property, lease it to an operator, and if you do that, getting up to twice the fair market rent, long-term low-impact tenants, and that is significant residual income. Great way to go. The next way is to own the real estate and to operate the business, number two, Great way to go, that's what I do, that's what I encourage you to do. Here's what the numbers look like. The average right now is $3,600 per person for a private room in assisted living in the United States. That's what it costs, average home. Trust me when I say you probably don't wanna live in an average home. So I'm gonna want you to say above average for you. Let's say the home is licensed for 10 people. Gross income potential is 36,000. What are the expenses? The expenses in the home, just so you understand the number, everything that you have in your home. 
magazines, newspapers, cable TV, food, activities, landscape, utilities, maintenance, business license. It's really not that expensive. Depends on the state, somewhere between 500 a year and 1,000 a year. Caregivers, that's your biggest expense. Typically two caregivers during the day, one at night. It just depends, but you have to keep that caregiver expense to a certain ratio of the gross income for this to work properly. Facility manager, not you. You gotta account for vacancies, property insurance, property taxes, and so on. Your expenses are somewhere between 21,000 and 11,000. What's the difference between those two? That's the logical answer, 10,000. <laughs> The difference is you're in the business, working it yourself, or you're paying somebody else to do it. Now, I'm going to tell you, a lot of people who are doing this business are people that come from other countries who come here and say, what's the opportunity? They can come here and rent a house, and they can open up this business, and they can be making themselves $10,000, $20,000 a month in profit, having their selves, their spouse, their kids being the operators of that business. And they're driving brand new BMWs, and they do a great job. That's what they do. What I'm suggesting is that you can do this as a business and you can hire them to do it and maybe they move on to do it themselves, but it's a great way to go. So I'm gonna assume that you're not gonna be the operator full time on site. You're hiring somebody else to be the manager and caregiver. Debt service or rent, couldn't you buy or rent a pretty nice house in your area for 5,000 a month, yes or no? I think yes, that leaves you 10,000 a month. So when I say 10,000 a month is the net income after all expenses, that's not pie in the sky, that's just an average home. That's twice the national household income in our country today. That's an average home and that's not you working 40 hours a week. Now I'm gonna say, when you think this through, if you had just a little bit nicer home, same 10 residents, but instead of 3,600, you're charging 5,000, that's 50,000 gross income. Let's say we increase the expenses a little bit. What's the extra? A little nicer food. Maybe we have a chef come in and prepare some of that food instead of the caregivers doing it. Let's do a little nicer house in a nicer neighborhood. Go to 7,500. Well, now our expenses are a little bit more, but the net income is higher too. That's 20,000 a month, 240,000 a year. How many of you would be able to get by on an extra 20 or 20,000 a month? Could you get by? Now, if you're saying, Gene, I don't have the money to buy the house, how many of you could find somebody who'd be willing to lend you the money, collect the 7,500 in debt service, and then maybe take a share of that profit? I mean, I can walk you through all this. The point is there's a lot of money on the table. Number three, be a private lender. But ultimately, what do you want? What you want to be is in the right place at the right time, and you are. The silver tsunami is here, it's coming, it's big now, and it's bigger later. In addition to that, and again, this is not just me talking, this is Harry S. Dent in his book, The New York Times Bestseller. And what does it say? The opportunity of our lifetimes assisted living facilities. So what do we want? A crystal ball. My crystal ball says very clearly with 77 million baby boomers, this is from the 2010 US Census, right? 10,000 people a day are turning 65. They're not moving into assisted living, but the 4,000 people every day that are turning 85 there's your prime target. That's the fastest growing demographic in our country and in the world. It's huge. And they're lasting. They don't just turn 85 and turn over and they're gone. They're lasting. That's 120,000 85 year olds every single month. 1.4 million every year in our country alone. It's a huge opportunity. 90% of us want to stay at home for our whole lives. We would just want to stay at home and pass away there in our own home. That's the reality of it. I get it. But the reality is 70% of us will need help with our activities of daily living for an average of three and a half years. And that's the opportunity. They're gonna need a home and assistance. And that's what we do. We provide a home and assistance. So why Raoul, why you, why now? That's your choice. But that's what we do at the Residential Assisted Living Academy. So does this check your boxes? What are you looking for? A rewarding career, potentially. Unlimited income potential. Maybe you're looking for something that doesn't require 40 hours a week. Maybe the ability to have financial freedom, but more importantly, time freedom. You know, I've trained hundreds of thousands of people around the world, and when I ask them, what do you really want? Most people say financial freedom. But when I drill down and dig down, what they really want is their time freedom. All right, money buys time. Meaningful work. I volunteer to do stuff you couldn't pay me to do wash cars, clean toilets, build sheds that people call homes. You couldn't pay me to do it, but I'll volunteer to do it. 
meaningful work. Financial security in a downturn. We just went through the Great Recession. The next one that comes will be even bigger. How did you fare? What mistakes did you make last time that you're going to fix or correct and do differently this time? You know, when it comes to senior housing and taking care of mom and dad, people all of a sudden don't just say, you know what, things are going bad for me, so now I'm going to take mom back and take care of her myself. No, they stayed in those homes and they paid those bills. Think about that. Build and pass on a legacy. I'm going to pass, I'm going to just kind of finish this right here with this part. Right now, if you're not prepared for what's going to happen to you in your long-term care, I'm going to explain to you what's going to happen because people come to me all the time and they say, Gene, how am I going to pay for this? Right? You're saying it's $5,000 a month. How do we pay for this? And here's the reality. Everything that you have is going to be liquidated. And that $5,000 a month and times two if it's UN. So $5,000 a month is going to start being paid to somebody else to take care of that long-term care. Now, if it's not today and it's 30 years from now, that's more likely $10,000 a month just with normal inflation. <laughs> So that $10,000 a month is going to come out of your assets, your home, your retirement account, the money that you've worked hard and saved for. And then what's going to happen is all of that retirement account eventually is going to go away and then it's going to go to your kids because they do love you. And all of their assets are going to be spent and spent down. And then their college education for their kids goes away. And then their retirement account goes away. And that sounds horrible and I am making you feel bad. But there's a solution. Do just one of these homes. If you own just one of these homes and you now are making an extra ten or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars a month, you can spend it, blow it, give it away, put it in a bank account, do what you want. But when it's your time to check into a home, you don't have to go looking. You just move right into the master bedroom. It's paid for, it's free. My wife and I already made that decision. On our second home, we were literally there in the master bedroom of the second home, and we literally turned to each other and said, we could move in to this room someday. And it was just like an epiphany. We just said, I didn't even think about that. I don't need to spend money for long-term care insurance. But for those of you that do have a long-term care insurance, keep paying your premium. Keep paying your premium. Because when you own your own home and you move into it, you can start collecting on your own insurance and pay yourself. Double dip and enjoy every bite. <laughs> That's the beauty of that. Keep it going. Three ways to participate. We just went through them all. There it is. We're here, we're here for you, but what I want to do right now is just kind of open it up in our last, what do we have, five minutes, Mel? Yeah. And uh, by the way, we left a brochure for you on the table, on, on the table, on your chair. And in next to that, if I can borrow that one sheet right here, just this one little piece, good. There's this piece here. If you want us to get more information to you, if you would, fill this in. And if, you want, if you're looking for investing, like you're saying, I just want to be an investor, put a dollar sign, let's say, in the top right-hand corner. And that way, when we contact you, we know that you're interested in being part of, you want more information on how you can just invest. Other than that, we'll assume you're interested in just general information and so on. When you put down your information on this, thank you,